Um, sitting here and listening to lawyers speak, and I'm not a lawyer, I have no legal background, or um, well, just an ordinary woman, um, mother, mother of three, um, starting out on a journey of education. And so listening to Imran and his jokes, and sorry, but I don't have any jokes. <laughs> anything. My jokes are usually where I stand up on a podium, and the podium is so high, you cannot just about to see me, so that, that's, usually, that's usually my joke. <laughs> Um, 19 years ago, um, I received the news that no mother ever wants to be told the death, of, the death of their child. I would say this was the most difficult moment of my life, when I was told that my son Stephen had died, and I wanted to die also. Because of my son's killers, I had to bury my eldest child, and so started on a long journey for justice. There is no deeper pain or injustice a person can suffer than to know that they live longer than their child who had died a painful death. But my pain did not end there. Stephen's case is well documented and brought about many changes in institutions, in the law and in the community. One of the, ma one of the major changes is the, is the double jeopardy that allowed Gary Dobson to be retried and convicted. Back in 1996, the judge of the private prosecution instructed the jury to bring a not guilty verdict on all those, including Gary Dobson, who was charged for, murdering, for the murder of Stephen. That was a dark day, and one I'll never forget. The inquiry in 1998 was a turning point in the history of Stephen's case. The inquiry gave an insight into the institutional racism that had plagued our society and I believe was instrumental in Stephen's death on the night of the 22nd of April 1993. <coughs> Over the last 19 years, not only had I had to fought for justice for Stephen, but other sons and daughters. To ensure a crime like this couldn't, could not happen again, not to another person's family although many families are still experiencing injustice. In the words of Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King, take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase, just the first step. The day I decided to stand up for the memory of my son, I took the first step, never knowing whether I would ever get justice for Stephen. Not knowing if I would ever, if, if it would ever heal the pain of losing him. I took the first step, not only, I took the first step only knowing that I had to. That I wanted more for my son's legacy than for him to be remembered for the murder and racism. I wanted justice for him to see the change in the justice system. I became Stephen's voice as he had lost his. Stephen was bright and would challenge all indiscrimination, so I became his voice. I'd like to think that Stephen would be at peace now. One of the most positive things to come out of Stephen's passing is the Stephen Lawrence Charitable Trust, set up in 1998. I founded a trust not only to give a meaning to Stephen's legacy, but to give every person who walks through our doors the opportunity to realize their dreams. The Stephen Lawrence Charitable Trust is, an in, uh, is a national education charity committed to providing opportunity and access to disadvantaged young people in, fos in fostering positive community relations and enabling people to realize their full potential. The Trust has been committed to supporting young people from diverse disadvantaged backgrounds to help them to break the social and economic barriers that stood between them and a career in architecture, the built environment and urban design, Stephen's chosen career. I have a personal stake in every young person who walks through our doors. They are my Stephens. I could not be prouder to say that we have awarded over 100 bursaries and having seen eight of them qualified as architects. This is, this is gratifying to see because we have been so successful with supporting and, have, and, and giving architectural bursary students. We, now look, we are now looking to broaden to other professions 
where young people who are facing, uh, who are facing social economic barriers. <coughs> Last year, for the first time, with the support of the Landscape Institute, two students received bursaries to study landscape architecture. <coughs> also this year, the Worshipful Company pa um, of Pavias will be supporting the Trust to award bursaries to study construction. We're also looking at other professions other than in the built environment. For example, law, finance, media, to start off with. Since Stephen's death, there's been a lasting legacy that has been achieved. I can say that there are many things that can be attributed to his name. We have a change in the race relation, in, in, in the race relation, the Race Relation Amendment Act 2000. The Act brought all institutions in, including the police, who had sat outside the law, in line. The law on sentences is another example of, um, of this. During the sentences of Stephen's, at the end of Stephen's trial, Gary Dobson and David Norris were sentenced at the age they were when they committed the murder in 1993. If the murder was committed after 2005, they would have been given a much longer sentence, even though they were only 16 and, 16 and, 18, 16 and 17 years as they were then. As I have mentioned about the double jeopardy law, is where a defendant can be retried, as you um, law students will know, can be retried for the second time if there is new and compelling evidence. Before the law, um, before the law changed, Gary Dobson would have, would have walked free even if there were new evidence um, that came to light. I've only mentioned a few, and I think you will agree with me that these are significant changes that had happened in the last 19 years in Stephen's name. Building, a, building the future for our children through the work of the centre is ongoing. Over the years, we have worked closely with local schools, colleges, delivering educational programmes from computer design programmes to building a robot that was part of an American competition. We've also run Architecture for Everyone, a programme partnering with a, with, a global in, with a global architectural practice delivering workshops up and down the country to young people who were looking to enter into the profession. The Trust has also delivered educational work for the London Development Agency. Valuing education, this programme ran until the funding came to an end. <coughs> Our purpose at the Stephen Lawrence Centre is to help all those is to help those who do not possess the tools to break down the social barriers preventing them from reaching their and recognising their aspiration. We are all aware that there are invisible constraints, be it the cause of where they were born or who their parents were. I believe our young people have the character to be better than us, to forge new paths and to change our world. However, those beautiful minds need to be watered, fed in order to grow. At the Stephen Lawrence Charitable Trust, every young person is a seed, and we are the watering can, helping, helping, them to, helping to cultivate new generation of thinkers and aspiration of change. I cannot stress more implicitly how important it is to educate and, and nurture our children. I, cannot, I can only <coughs> explain it like this. Education is an armour, the defence against the world, which can sometimes be cruel, sometimes harsh and trying. Education is a raincoat to shield them against the storm. The light against the dark. At the Trust, we understand that education is one of the most valuable commodities you can pass on to your children. The Trust offers an opportunity to improve young lives. The Trust is now going through the third phase of its life. Phase one was the initial work of the architectural and the, and the built environment profession. Stephen had, had an ambition to become an architect. As part of Stephen's legacy, 
I'm determined to help young people in similar, um, with similar ambitions. <coughs> the trust is set up with the, with the object of making architecture a related profession accessible to the country's most disadvantaged young people. The major part of the legacy has been, has been funded has been funding bursaries for architectural students. The trust has worked with key partners and professionals to enable them to understand how the profession needs to widen its pool of talent. A high profile highlight of the relation has been the annual lecture of the steam, uh, lecture at the Royal Institute of British Architects. Last year, the speaker was, a, was, was the international acclaim architect Zaha Adin. The world famous architect was, was commencing Stephen's, Stephen and the work of the trust. Over the years, many eminent people have, have um, commemorated, sorry, com, my pronunciation is really bad here, the com, to come past that. Commemorate. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, by delivering a lecture, Either on, architect, either on architecture or social, social issues. The inaugural, the inaugural lecture in 2000 was by the Prince of Wales. Since then, among others, have been David Lammy, Trev Phillips, Baroness Scotland, when she was Attorney General, Boris Johnson, debating with Una King. And I should say, um, also, Imran was part of... Um, <coughs> a panel of um, discussion. This year, the new event of the Criminal <coughs> Justice Lecture, introduced by Paul Dacre, the editor of The Mill, whose intervention had had profound impact in 1997, when they printed on their front page the faces of who we believed to be responsible for, Stephen's, for the murder of Stephen. He introduced um, to deliver the lecture was delivered by Sir Ian, Sir Ian Blair, the former commissioner of the Met. All these eminent people, the comrades, we can't pronounce that word, Stephen's life. Phase two was the, was the creation of the Stephen Lawrence Centre in Deptford, which was officially opened by Ken Livingston in 2008. The building itself is a, is a moment of a monument to Stephen. It is the beautiful award-winning award building designed by the famous architect David Ajay with windows decorated by the design and designed by Chris O'Feely. The power and beauty of the building strikes you as you approach it along Brookmill Road. It is what the building provides which is, which is central to Stephen's memory. The building's, the, the building's about providing opportunity for young people, young people like Stephen, who are, are ambitious for their future, but for whom, because of the race or economic circumstances, find it hard to realise their ambition. England is a social immobility country, and, and the centre is equipped with the sort of space and staff and responsibility to enable young people to break down these barriers. In the second phase, the Trust has received a significant grant funding from public bodies such as the London Development Agency for the Centre with Young People. The Trust has just received an evaluation of the Youth and Creative Design Project funded by the, um, LD, by the LDA. The report promises, sorry, the report praises the tailor-made pro program for young people, focusing on promoting the involvement of underrepresented groups of young people in the built environment. In engaging almost 1,200 young people through, the, through this project alone, the centre has secured a, a, a critical mass that has helped to become established with the local community in Deptford as a site of positive learning and inform the cultural expression. The trust is now in its third phase of its existence. 
Because of the economic times, we no longer live in a grant-funded time, times. Um, and for the, for the charity, like ours, public fund has become an increasingly hard to obtain. The trust has to make its own way as a visible commercial organisation. The trustees have been working very hard with the staff to make, a, make this transition as it is a vital part of its living legacy for Stephen. Remains to, to champion for social justice. The issues for black students don't change rapidly. Less than 10% of the black students at the top uh, at the top Russell Group University compare with the greater with a quarter of the white students. Black students are likely to achieve 24% less than their white counterpart. Similar statistics exist for the white working class students. We want to use our experience in the breaking through we've made with, architect with architecture in, in, in new worlds. As I have mentioned before, we are extending our remit to the legal, uh, legal and finan financial professions. Despite the outcome and, and the publicity of the trial, these are challenging times for the trust. But we will prevail because it is so important to keep Stephen's legacy alive and to reinforce the tremendous impact of the work the trust <coughs> has done over the years in the name of social justice for all. Thank you.